Hello there, and welcome to our day four coverage of the World Juniors. Without hesitation, let's get into our first game, Switzerland versus Denmark. The Danes came out early with two very good chances, but Swiss goalie Luca Hollenstein was standing on his head. It's still 0-0. It wouldn't be until the Swiss power play when Philip Kurashev will find himself scoring another goal that resembles his second that he scored against Canada. It wouldn't be until later in the second when Philip Kurashev would find himself scoring another goal on Mad Sugard, an absolute snipe on the blocker side. Skip to the second now where we find Swiss defenseman Simon Lukete scoring a goal on the rush 5 hole. It is now 3-0 Switzerland. The Danes were still applying pressure and trying to get their first goal of the tournament, but they just come inches away hitting the crossbar on one of their power plays. Into the third now we find Philip Kurashev. He finishes off the hat trick, scoring a beautiful goal to achieve the hat trick and making the game 4-0, which is what it would stand at. 4-0 for the Swiss over the Danes. Hollenstein ends up picking the 21 save shutout. The bar kind of helped them out there a bit, stopping the Danes from scoring their first of the tournament. Which, by the way, I don't know if they'll even score this tournament, man. It's get They're coming so close. This is obviously their best game they've played. Probably the most even matchup they've had. But they... Part of it is also they're just getting unlucky, but they gotta finish. There are some I feel like they should have had easily, but it's just it's just coming down to finishing the puck now. It's That's all it comes down to now. On to our second game, Finland is taking on Slovakia, and early, right away into the game, Lukanen almost throws it away for the Finns, setting up the Slovakians for a goal, giving it away, but fortunately for him, the Slovakians just miss, and it's still 0-0. But pretty soon, the Slovaks would find themselves in penalty trouble, and on the 5-on-3, Henry Jokohar you of the Chicago Blackhawks scores to make it 1-0. Santeri Vertanen would then score a backhand goal off a beautiful feed from Urho Vakaninen. Finland would continue the onslaught of goals by goals from 17-year-old Vili Hainola and from Anton Lundell. Slovakia would end up muting Finland's dominance for a second as Vancouver giant Milos Roman scores a goal on the 5-on-3 to make it 4-1. Although Finland would come back again as Eli Tolvanen skates around the entire zone of Slovakia and lays one off to Oskari Laksinen, who absolutely claps on home to make it 5-1. Other than their loss to Sweden, Finland is looking like an incredible team this World Juniors, and I can see them making it far once it gets into the playoff rounds. Lukanen made 22 saves in the win, and if there's one thing I want to point out also over Finland, I want to say that they might want to work on their discipline a little bit, taking 6 penalties in this game, bring them to 14 in the tournament, which is as many as they had last year already. So maybe they're going to want to work on that before they get into the playoff rounds. Next up, the Canadian hometown heroes are taking on the Czech Republic. Canada was early to respond with a great feed from Owen Tippett right to Maxime Comtois, who shoots it off the ass of Martin Kaut as if it were Kim Kardashian's, making the game 1-0. Although right after, Jan Janik finds himself in a 2-1 with Andre Makala, who ends up giving it over to him and scoring to make it 1-1 just like that. Later on in the period though, Canada would get a power play and Brett Leeson would tip in the shot from Ty Smith to make it 2-1. A couple minutes later though, Canada's youngest member Alexi Lafreniere scores his first goal in the World Juniors with a beautiful shot off of the pass from Jack Studnika, making it 3-1. This was a huge goal for Lafreniere since Tim Hunter was already being on him for his somewhat lackluster style of play, looking like he's not really giving a damn out there. This is gonna stick it to him. This is gonna make him look like he belongs on this squad. We're into the second, which was quite a quiet period, other than a goal from Mackenzie Antwistle, with a beautiful pass from Joe Valeno, making this a 4-1 game. Into the third, we have a goaltending change for the Czech Republic as in Yuri Patera, and was put in for Jacob Skarik. Midway through the third, we have the Czech captain, Martin Nachas, get a boarding penalty on Evan Bouchard, which in my opinion, this is uncalled for, man. As the captain of your team, you should not be taking stupid penalties like this, this just makes you look like a absolute loser i don't i if i were on this team i would not want to look up to a player who's boarding people's faces into the boards i'm not just saying that as a fan of canada i mean that on any single level that's not a good thing to do especially in this tournament on this power play morgan frost scores his fourth of the tournament making this a 5-1 to one game which would be our final score di pietro would finish the game with 23 saves i think di pietro would be the clean cut starter for canada from now on he's looking like that tim hunter said he is I think he's ready for it. Let's see what he can do in the later games. On the other note, I'd like to say that the Czechs gotta tone it down. They had 30 penalty minutes this game. I know 20 of those come from game misconducts off of the boarding penalties, but still, even boarding penalties are stupid to take, and you don't wanna be taking those in this tournament where you get ultimately penalized very harshly for doing so. Off into our final game tonight. We have the Swedes taking on the States. This is gonna be one exciting game. 
Right off the bat, five minutes in, Sweden's one nothing up with a goal from Philip Westerlund, an absolute snipe from the top of the key. one nothing Sweden. Skip to the second now, where now Sweden finds himself 2 nothing up with a goal from Ricard Hug, which kind of deflected off of Keandre Miller, I think. Still a good goal though, 2 nothing. And then right after that, Emil Benstrom finds himself scoring another goal this tournament, a breakaway feed from David Gustafsson, scoring on the backhand, making it 3 nothing for Sweden. Into the third, we get another goal from Sweden from their captain Eric Brandstrom scoring his fourth of the tournament, coming from under the red line to get up into the key and absolutely rip one far side on the backhand. Although this game starts to get very interesting now. Mikey Anderson on the United States gets a goal to make it 4-1 on the power play and then a couple minutes later Sweden finds himself on more penalty troubles and Ryan Paling scores a power play goal to make it 4-2. The states now have pulled their goalie and Ryan Paling has scored another goal off of a deflection off of a Swedish defender right to his stick and he scores making it 4-3. The goaltender was pulled again and none other than Ryan Paling scores an absolute beautiful shot on the right side far side on the goalie. This ties the game up 4-4 with an assist from another than the man who scored a hat-trick yesterday against Kazakhstan, Joel Farabee. This has to be one of the greater comebacks in recent history of in the World Juniors. This is a mental comeback, man. <laughs> That's tough to do. This is not like the USA are coming back against a team, I don't know, like Switzerland or Czechoslovakia. They're coming back against the team that has won 46 World Junior round-robin games in a row. This is huge. We now find ourselves in overtime where about four minutes in, the state's luck runs out and Adam Bockvist, a Chicago Blackhawks prospect, Prospect, scores the OT winner on a pass from Lucas Alvarez, and the Swedes win five to four. As much as I dislike the States, just as a fan, not as not as I have nothing personal with them. As much as I dislike them, you got to give them credit for that. That is a that is a crazy feat to do. Not many teams would be able to do that against one of the best teams in the world like that. And now Ryan Paling is tied for the lead in points in this tournament with seven, tied with Morgan Frost. I'm pretty sure. Man, like. This, this, that was an interesting game, folks. That was an awesome game to watch. Unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it. I just got to see the highlight reel. But if you guys watched that game, leave your comments down below and tell me what it was like watching that actually live. Because even just from the highlights, I was jumping out of my chair there a little bit. That was exciting to watch, man. I hope we see more games like that because that was honestly a nail biter. That was epic, man. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I see you guys tomorrow for day five coverage and see you next time.